No chemicals or preservatives, just 100% honest to goodness hickory smoked meat. Let's put another shrimp on the barbie. Boy, some chicken wings have really hit the spot. You ain't got no better food like some chicken wings, some baby back ribs, some fries or something? Look at that, just two guys talking, am I right? He's just talking. Hey, howdy, hey. Welcome to another episode of Fat Guys with Smokers, the number one, John, barbecue podcast in the northern Utah area, still undisputed heavyweight Undis- champion. I get it. Yeah, see what I did. Yeah, see I, what I, I did. I see what you did there. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh, and we... Uh... Oh, the barbecue light needs to be on. There it is. You can adjust the brightness on that thing? Oh, yeah. That's sick. Got a... That's the real deal. We don't mess around here. Mm-mm. Big We're professional. Time. Profesh. Muy professionales. Yeah. I think that's French. For... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, John, what's been going on? It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been and, a minute. Uh, <laughs> we had to bail on last week, so I apologize I'll own that. That was... It was all your fault, John. It was all somebody's fault. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we had a little bit of an accident. I was... Yeah. Tuesday morning last week, I got... We got a call that our middle boy got hit by a car on the way to school. I mean, we're talking ambulance, police. Like, my kids just drove past it and were freaking out. Like, what's going on? So, let first and foremost like he's fine miracle after miracle after miracle led to him being totally fine he's up he's running around um miracles continued today took his i took his bike into al's sporting goods Mm -hmm. um that's where we bought it i was like guys like can this even be fixed like what what's up here Mm -hmm. and they're like ah well it's really hard to get parts for kids bikes and anyways they reached out to specialized and Specialized came back um, today and said, hey, we shipped you new parts. Like, we're so happy he's okay. Oh, wow. Tell him to get back on the bike. That's so awesome. Yeah, and, like, it's... Jeez. It was not a cheap bike to begin with, um, but Robbie rides his bike. Like, his whole life is his bike. Mm-hmm. He is the only child I've ever met that wore through the rubber on a bike tire mm. before he outgrew it. Yeah. So... He, uh, mm, he's fine. Awesome. He's great. Um, the guy that hit him, like just distracted. I don't know what his deal was. I talked to his insurance company and the story he told them was wild compared to what actually happened. <laughs> um, but there's a police report and several eyewitnesses <laughs> that match my story. So they've been great to work with. Wild. Like, um, yeah, so still, every time I hear a story that he tells, like, my blood just boils. I'm glad it wasn't somebody that I knew. Yeah, that'd um, be hard. Well, I would hope if it was someone I knew, they'd have more integrity than this individual. Mm. Um, but really grateful that everything worked out. He's fine. His car's fine. Well, his car's got a big dent that will get worked out. Mm. Um but yeah, Robbie walked away with scrapes and bruises, took him to the hospital, CAT scans, ultrasounds, like, um, yeah, the doc was like, John, like, I've been doing this a long time. Like there should be something like we're going to run extra tests because there should be something here. I mean, he rode the hood for what did you say? 50 feet and then got tossed off. Uh, yeah. So I don't know where he came off the hood. He was 50 feet from the point of impact in the crosswalk. Golly, man. And his bike was another eight feet past that. Knocked him clear out of his shoes. Um, and the poor mm. crossing guard. Oh, my gosh. Like, oh, yeah. Kim. Well, she was right there, right? She almost got hit. Mm. Um, like, feel so bad for her that she had to go through all of it. But, like, miracle after miracle. So many kind people. Um you talk about 
you like you hear people talk about being overwhelmed with generosity and kindness mm. and i thought like it was just kind of a thing like, right. that you say like oh everyone's being so nice like we're so overwhelmed like i was physically and emotionally overwhelmed by the end of the day on tuesday mm -hmm. so many people came by i mean the janitor from the school came by <laughs> and like brought him a pepsi and you know, just all of these people were like coming out of the woodwork to check on him, check on us. We had meals coming in. Like it was all I could do not to just like put a sign up on the door. that says he's fine. We're fine. Please go away. <laughs> Let us go to sleep. <laughs> no, he, so. Oh, that's it, awesome. And man. I don't want to, that to like sound like I'm not grateful because we're so grateful. Like it. Yeah. Just so many cool things. Hmm. So many cool things that happened to make that possible. So. Oh, that's awesome! But and he's back, back. He up, was out going a, all day Saturday, <laughs> running around like a wild man. Like I wish it. I actually wish the accident scared him just a little bit more. Yeah, <laughs> because he's that's just Robbie, man. Oh, that's awesome! Like that's just how he rolls. So. Well, that's awesome that it worked out that well, considering that's pretty miraculous. Yeah, and I have a feeling we'd be having a bit of a different conversation had it gone a little differently. Oh, it, so everything from the crossing guard like let him ride his bike across the street when she's not supposed to. Had he not been on his bike, either he would have just like been ragdoll. Yeah. Even further. Yeah, his drug. Or he it. would have been knocked down and sucked under the car, like mm -hmm. because he was on the bike. He ended up on the hood. Mm -hmm. um, our neighbor, that's a deputy at the sheriff's department was dropping his kid off like he called it into debt dispatch while the, like before a 911 call could be completed mm -hmm. like, just so many little things like that of people there to take care of him a mm -hmm. random EMT drove by and stopped to take care of him while they waited for the like regular crew to get there mm -hmm. like just so many of those little things that um anyone that reached out like thank you um really grateful for for all the love that we got that's awesome man so well but that's wonderful um that's why we didn't have a show mike uh i was like yeah let's record on tuesday i was exhausted <laughs> on tuesday and then last wednesday like mike texted me he's like so you really want to do this and i was like Dude, I am so tired. <laughs> we yeah. can do it. I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I was about. like getting ready to come over and was like, you know what? Maybe we should just, yeah. So right. thank you people for being patient and not, you know, not bailing on us. Because we, we are here for you now. Yeah. But. And this is really weird because I swear I adjusted this zoom. There you go. Like that. Nailed it. Nailed it. It's way better. Way better. Way better. And this is this is important stuff because one of the things that I discovered last week, um, there's been this thing going around Instagram in the Meat Church circle. Okay. I know you're a Malcolm Reed guy. I, I am out of the circle, so this is news to me. But I'm I'm gonna bring you in. Okay. Oreos and barbecue rub. Oh. Okay. So double stuffed because if you don't, is there why any other bother? kind? Yeah. Um, go ahead and grab one, Mike. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna pop these. Twisting it off. Okay. Yep. Get it get it opened up. All right. I didn't do that great of a job. Me neither. Mine kind of half came off. Feel free to grab another one. I think it'll be fine. Anyways, so this is a this. Haley thought I was just being a smart aleck, but if you lick your cream side, uh huh, it, it'll help you here. So done. Done and done. And then we're uh, we're gonna hit it with a little. I've got Texas sugar because it's the best rub in the world. It seems to make sense. Um, lots of people. So you're, and then we're just putting the Oreo back together. Back then. together. So we're sprinkling a little of this on yep. the cream side that we've licked, just so and that it sticks. Putting her back together. Don't, get, get a little more. Don't be. A, oh, I don't know. Don't be afraid of it here. I'm so scared right now. Okay. No, Man, I don't know, John. This is weird. I don't know if I like this at all. Try it. Interesting. What does this remind me of? 
I don't know, but I don't want to eat Oreos any other way now. It's actually really good. I was not excited when I popped this in my mouth, John. I was... Hmm. It's like you've got good Oreo, but then you've got like this little bit of salty tip just, to yeah, it. Yeah, just that... a little savoriness that kind of... You know what? I better try it again just to make I was gonna sure say, that I understand what's happening here. Get after it. Go ahead. I mean... For the so, record, this is the second package of Oreos because the one I bought for us to do this with, well, it just doesn't exist yeah. anymore. Well, that's and I how wasn't, it is at our house. I wasn't quite alone in the efforts of consuming it, but... Uh, <laughs> it fought a good fight, and now it's gone. It fought a good fight. So, the chocolate freaked me out. I was thinking, other than that, it's basically like... Kind of a sugary cream cheese dip type of deal. Uh-huh. But I like the chocolate. Like, I feel like it kind of... It almost reminds me of, like, don't... Don't like in Hispanic cultures, they, like, put chili on their chocolate or something like that. Is that a uh-huh. thing, or did I just make that up? No, no, So like it's kind of like there's that. There's chocolate in all sorts of Mexican dishes. Yeah. Like mole? Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Hmm. I don't think I've seen Mike think this hard in a long time. Well, it's good, but it shouldn't be good. Like, like I was thinking when I watched you do this five seconds ago, I was thinking, this is the worst idea ever, John. This is going <laughs> to, I mean, I'll fake it if you want me to, but holy crap. Ooh, I got a little, a little zealous. Just like a depth of flavor that it adds to the Oreos. So have you tried this with anything besides Texas sugar? Uh, I've done Honey Hog. Okay. Gospel, which is just the, like the all-purpose one. Yeah. It's like salt, pepper, garlic, yeah. and a little I, color. I haven't done the... Uh, I haven't done Voodoo, but I've thought about doing Voodoo. That's what I'm wondering. If the spicier you get, maybe it doesn't marry the flavors together quite as well. Hmm. All right, guys. Get you some double stuffed Oreos. There we Split them in half. Lick the cream side, sprinkle a little barbecue rub on it. Just the depth of flavor. That's all I can think about. Like it just, it's more than just a simple little bit. Anyways, I'll leave that there by you. Feel free to continue to partake. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So. Um. I like blew your mind. You don't even know what we're going to do. Dude, talk seriously. About next, do you? I'll, I'm serious. I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen, John. Like, did you just make this up? It's pretty dang good. That's some pretty complex flavor profiling going on there, I feel like. Whoa. Ooh. That was almost a disaster <laughs> that on made multiple a levels. Horrible night. John almost lost his drink, everybody. And Ooh. I forget sometimes that people. Don't watch us on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Because you should watch us if on If you don't, YouTube. you should hit us up because we're delightful. At a minimum, go and subscribe. Today we're matching. I just noticed that looking at our screen. Yeah. We're both wearing black. It's a very slimming color. So Until I turn sideways. Right. Yeah. Well, obviously. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But. Um, All um, right. Yeah, shout out. Shout out. Shout out. I know, we really need like some cool sound yeah, effects some... here. Do, 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 do. I don't know what that was. But uh, let me throw this up there for people watching on YouTube who have subscribed to our channel to get really excited about. Because... And listen, I want to be very clear. This was mostly, if not all, John. He has been working tirelessly on this bad boy. And I am just here to reap the awesome <laughs> benefits. Well, if everyone remembers, I quit my job. So I've had some time on my hands. <laughs> he did have a little more spare time, but still, very impressive. Yeah. Mike and I have been talking about this for a long time. Finally brought it to fruition. Batguyswithsmokers.com is live and ready for you to go and enjoy. hey oh, the number one barbecue website in northern Utah. Undisputed heavyweight Undisputed. champion. I, uh... If only I knew a graphic designer that could make us like a sweet medallion that oh, we could put on the website. I've got an idea. Interesting. Too bad I don't think he listens to our podcast. No kidding. What a jerk. His kid does, though. Declan? Welcome, Hudson, buddy. Hudson? Burrito? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Burrito, our uh, number one ambassador. Yes. One and only. <laughs> oh, she's so, a good sport. Yeah. So, um, cool things on the website. You can look at our awesome logo. Yeah. Grab our latest YouTube videos and podcast episodes. Uh-huh. See what's happening on the IG. But most importantly, down at the bottom, uh, there's a spot where you can sign up for our mailing list. And once we get enough people on the mailing list to make it worth the time that I'll have to put in to do this, um, we'll send out notifications every time we... Uh, we'll send out notifications every time we post something on YouTube or, you know... We've got a blog section as well. I haven't decided if we'll do it for blog posts, but we'll definitely do it when we drop new episodes. Yeah, so, that'll be awesome. Um, the blog, though, there is a great story about the damn Brinkman. <laughs> we haven't talked about that in a no while. Kidding, man. When we're throwing shade at Brinkman, what was that, like, first episode? Oh, my gosh. That, that got real. Brinkman almost ended <laughs> my love of barbecue. Before it even like really got I, going. I saw Brinkman on Facebook Marketplace for like 25 bucks. I almost bought it just to get it and like do it again just to be like, you're not going to own me, Brinkman. <laughs> you can't let it win. But, oh, that's awesome. So... Um, yeah, so I, I think our plan is we'll, we'll kind of just post some fun stories or things that we talk about because we've got a lot of fun stories that we've talked about almost like yeah. at this point, they've kind of just become inside jokes. So that'll be a good place to kind of, yeah, you'll be able to get help there. People catch up there. Um, and recipes too, will be on here. So yeah, things that we talk about, things that we, um, want to share, those will all be on there as well. So, and we got some links for stuff we use, different gadgets, things yep. like that. I think that's right? the plan for next week. Is we'll go. We did this a while ago, but now with the website and there being a spot to put it, mm -hmm. um, we're gonna do an episode on things we use all the time, things we love, and even talk about if you're just getting into this. Yeah. What do you need? Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff. I mean. We both, I feel like, kind of just got into it before. I feel like now everybody has a smoker and is oh, starting yeah. to get into it. But I feel like when we started, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know how important a thermometer was. Like I was just like, all right, I guess we just cook it till it's not red anymore. You yeah, know? We, we just so. cook it until you you stick a fork in it, and when yeah. you turn it, if there's not a lot of resistance, like yeah, I, I remember reading that on like multiple forms and being yeah. like. Well, what does that mean? That's the thing. The forums, I still come across a few things written in like 2009 when it was like, yeah, yeah, we just, uh, you know, the old timers just cover everything in lighter fluid and just, it's fine. It'll burn off. No, anyway, no, it won't. It's kind of funny. So anyways, yeah, definitely check out the website. Fatguyswithsmokers.com. Dot com. We need to add that to like our outro. Ooh. And check out fatguyswithsmokers.com. I know. We've got a sick new uh, intro. We haven't updated the outro. Yeah, maybe we outro. should. Yeah. We probably should. The outro is that script that we wrote before we even started. So. Yep. Clay, when he was little and cute, and not the demonic child that he is now. <laughs> Isn't it sad what happens to kids as they Dude. grow up? Freaking a-holes. Five-year-olds, I'm telling you. <laughs> I love the kid, but he and I have been spending way too much time together. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sweet, man. Well, that's awesome. So check us out there. We're going to try to keep that going, and I don't know. I think it could be fun and hopefully turn into something that people are able to, to keep up with us, and we post our recipes, and so. Yep. It'll be awesome. And maybe even merch. Oh, yeah. If we can get enough love... We will do merch. Yeah. And that'll facilitate it. So tell all of your families and friends and even people that you only tolerate. Yep. To hit it up. Even people you don't like. Yeah. We'll take them all. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll, um, we'll take them. Yeah, Send them and, our way. And we've got a, I guess we're talking about merch. We do still have a couple of hats. Oh, we do have some hats. That's true. So if you yep. missed out on Chance to Get a Fat Guys with Smokers hat. Hit us up and we will take care of you. That was our first dabble into merch. We've learned a lot since then, but yeah. 
still available for sure. Yeah. All right. Now that we're uh, done shamelessly plugging, did we talk about subscribing to the YouTube channel? I don't think so. Subscribe to the YouTube right. channel. Right there? No, over here. In this right region, there. over here. Yeah. Forget it's mirrored. I know. Uh, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit us up on the website. Show us some love. We've kind of been... Uh, la- I mean, I gave my kids my phone. And <laughs> that's been our first Instagram video for a couple weeks. So we need to we, up our social media We had a couple right game. before that. But yeah, that's true. That's true. With the first three, I was like, where's Tanner? I know Tanner's yeah, here. He was there. He was in the background cheering him on. So. But hey, Tanner... Uh, trick shots by Tan. Is, Tan's trick shots, I think, is his account. Yeah, that's he my had, nephew. He had one go like super viral. Oh yeah, it was on like people's YouTube compilations and stuff. Like it was wild. Yeah. So, so. Yep. millions of views every time he posts a freaking trick shot video. It's millions of views, and I'll work my butt off on a brisket, and seven people see it and say, "Hey, I know, I know." That's neat. Be strong, Mike. Be strong. It's all right, dude. We're doing this for the love of the meat. I know. Speaking and of the for people. the love of the meat, you and I like fangirled Dude. back and forth on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Unplanned. Yeah, we did not. We did we, not run this by each other. Well, we hadn't even talked because I was like in my own little la la That's true because you were like, you know, surviving a family crisis and all. Yep. Yeah. Um, Berea. Dude. Berea. Every time I say it, I want to like sing it like Sound of Music. Maria, <laughs> Barisha. How do you solve a problem like Barilla? Dude. Um, dude, Barilla tacos, burritos. I've seen all kinds of Barilla crap all over Mexican restaurants. Um, and I had never had it until oh, man. like six months ago or so. Shout out to my buddy Alex across the street. I ran some garbage that I thought was delicious that I'd smoked over to them. They're like, "Hey, try this taco," and I was like, "What is that?" And it was phenomenal. So we we both ended up doing the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I've been a burrito taco junkie for a long time. It seems like it's just it just exploded, got really loaded, right? Popular yeah, like, wise, I've had it. Before, like, I was gonna say, it's been around for a long yeah, time, it's, no, it's nothing new, yeah. Um, but it, I don't know, like a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, I feel like that's it, what I was like, that's exploded where you saw it and everywhere. got really popular. Beto's had Berea stuff, like, it just went mm-hmm. all over the place, yeah. For a while, um, when Santos Tacos was here, yes, uh huh, dude, I that. That was one of two places that I could go get my lunch and be back in less than 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, minutes. it was right next to your spot. Yeah. Um, so I'd I'd go and, I'd man, I'd get, th- you know, three or four burrito tacos and bring them back to the office. And Dude. it was so unhealthy good. how close that was to my office. So good. But, so burrito, B-I-R-R-I-A, right? Yep. Tell us about burrito tacos, John. So Bria tacos. It is long simmered braised meat mm-hmm. um, that's cooked in a chili sauce. Yeah. So, and you, I mean, the way I did it. Yeah. Maybe you do what you did, and I'll do what I did, and we can yeah, kind of compare, I guess. I did not smoke mine. Don't be mad at me. But Dude, I did. it was horrible weather. So yeah. I don't blame you at all. Weather on Sunday was crap. Yeah. It was garbage. Um, Excuse me. But, so, my recipe, it had ancho chilies, wajillo chilies, and arbol chilies. That Those are all dried chilies that you can find in most grocery stores. But got those, uh, reconstituted them, which is a fancy way of saying I soaked them in water, or simmered them in water. Um, on the stove, there was some tomato and onion and garlic that I sauteed with spices and herbs. Um, one of those herbs was Mexican cinnamon. Oh. Did yours have Mexican uh-uh. cinnamon in it? No, that would be really um, good, though. So, and Mexican cinnamon is different than normal, like, 
apple spice cinnamon. Yeah, I've heard this. Yeah, uh, Mexican cinnamon is more like a vanilla flavor than a spicy, what you think of hot cinnamon as. Okay. So, um, had all of that. So you saute it, reconstitute all of all of that stuff. You put it in a blender, blend it into a sauce, and then you pour that over the meat. You sear the meat. Mm-hmm. and uh, let it cook for a long time. So, and I did, the recipe called for chuck. Uh, I went to buy a chuck roast. It was $6 a pound that mm-hmm. I said, uh, what? When Since when is chuck six bucks a pound? It's yeah. supposed to be a poor man's brisket. Where'd you go? Costco. Oh. Uh but Costco <laughs> sells brisket for three forty nine a pound, Jeez. and they happen to have um, one that wasn't in like the big cryovac pack. It was just the point end. Oh, right. That on. had a point and had point and flat, kind of that thick section of the brisket. Oh, yeah. So I picked that up for half the price and brought oh, it home and awesome, trimmed dude. it up. And let me tell you, man, it was friggin' money. Yeah. So. Did that, uh, let it cook all day long, just simmering until it was fall apart tender. And then we took the, we took tortillas. We used flour because that's what most of my family likes. I, if I ever did again, I traditionally you do it with corn and I think you should do it with corn. See, I did it with flour too and it was fine. It, It was fine, but like I couldn't ever get the tortillas crispy enough yeah the way see i, I ran them. into that too um but you dip the tortillas in the sauce really in the oil that comes to the top of the sauce mm-hmm. and you throw that down on on a skillet or on a blackstone would have been great it was raining so i used a griddle inside yeah, my plan was the blackstone too but um put some oaxaca cheese on it so really good melty white mild cheese Put some of the meat in there and just kind of griddled it. We served ours with uh, onions and cilantro. And I can tell you, I ate until I couldn't eat anymore. And then I had one more, like half of one more. <laughs> and it hurt so bad, but I was so happy. It like it was just friggin' delicious. Mm. So that uh, that was my method. The recipe was... Recipes by Isabella, maybe? Isabella, your boyfriend's here. Time for dinner. It was. I think I still have it up here because I haven't wanted to close it. Isabella eats. So I will I will link to this recipe. Assuming that her website doesn't freak out at me Hmm. would it freak out if you tried to link something no i just i mean it's her recipe i want to make sure we give her credit yeah that's fair so that's fair um because integrity matters mike it does indeed sorry we talked about i'll I'll come down (laughs) off my high horse easy (laughs) easy stand down so uh yeah mine was pretty much the same so i took i did do chuck roast i took like a two and a half pound chuck roast or something and i smoked it so i just hit it with some dia de la fajita nice uh, on all sides and then smoked it for two hours just on my grilla just on my pellet grill let it get a a decent bark on it it still wasn't cooked all the way um and then while that was kind of finishing up i guess it was probably closer to like two fifty two hours and 15 minutes that doesn't really matter um and then I, so my sauce, I boiled the chilies and then I grabbed, I don't remember the names of things like you do, but I know I had the, the arbol one and. So the arbol are little tiny red ones yeah, that are I hot. A, I had two of those and two of the, it was something and like, it's also known as like the Prasia or whatever. Do you know what I'm talking about? Was it like a long skin? A long, skinny red one that... I think so. What's that called? That's the Wahio. Yes, I had that. And then there's another one that... So I was following Malcolm Reed's recipe-ish based on what I had. 
Um, and so the other one, I can't remember what, what type of pepper it was, but it looked peppery. So was it dark and really wrinkly and bigger than all the other ones? Yes. That's an ancho. That's the one I had. I did have the ancho. We had the same peppers. Yeah, pretty much. So I threw them in there with uh, a white onion and, uh, several cloves of garlic, I think like six. And then I just hit it with some Dia de la Fajita and just let that, um, just kind of simmer for, I don't know, it wasn't very long, maybe 20 minutes or so. And then threw it in the blender, um, blended it, oh, blended it all up with some fresh cilantro. And I put in a can of petite diced tomatoes in the blender, kind of blended it all up. That made my, what do they call it? The consomme, the sauce or whatever. And then I put, so I put mine in the Dutch oven and I was going to put it back out on the smoker. Um, but the weather was crappy and I figured what's the point at this point? I'm just putting it in a Dutch oven. Yeah. So yeah, put it in the oven. Yeah. So that's what I did. I put it in the oven at three fifty, and I just let it go. So we went to church, came home. Um, my parents had a tree fall on their house. So holy crap. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> I just, it's kind of been a big deal. I just saw your parents last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody said anything. Well, that's because it's all fixed now, but the, the tree the fell on their house. It's okay. There were some holes, but all things considered, I think it was, you know, pretty much best case scenario. <laughs> but I forgot about that. I was like, man, why didn't I do that sooner? That's what happened. There's some over holes. There and, like, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's it fine. was in the attic. Everybody was fine. That's really all that matters. And they got it taken care of. But, um, Anyway, so I went over there on Sunday to see if they needed any help, and they'd already decided to call a professional, and I'm terrified of heights, so I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Look, dude, <laughs> I dropped $3,500 to put permanent lights on my house yeah. <laughs> because I am terrified to even go on a ladder up to the peak of my roof. Well, listen, man, when you're our size and girth, it's hard to trust things, you know? <laughs> like, I've never... So. I've never been afraid of falling through the roof. Like, I would yeah. welcome falling through the roof. Yeah, sure. But, dude, I've got a freaking steep roof mm -hmm. that I've been up on it before with both boots on the on the shingles and both hands on the shingles and was still sliding. Oh. And I was like, mm -mm, nope, mm -mm, I'm no, done. Get you. off. No, thank you. Yeah. So, anyway, they'd already called a professional and ended up coming and doing a really good job, so... Um, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So anyway, I was there for an hour or so and I felt kind of bad. I was no help at all. Just kind of like, well, this sucks. Sorry. Yeah. Looks like a tree on your house. Um, but then I came home and so it had, it had probably simmered at that point for, I don't know, four or five hours. And I took it out. Um, and I had added some beef broth to the consomme Yeah. and they did, what was the thing I saw? Um, shoot they added something that i didn't end up at oh no i didn't add beef broth i just used the um water from that i had simmered you know uh, yeah so i used that instead of beef broth and opened up after five hours of simmering and the consomme <laughs> or the sauce was just like a thick paste yeah and i was like oh crap so i thought i'd ruined it but i ended up just dumping in some beef broth and stirring it up Ugh, dude it's fantastic. Yeah. And I mean, awesome. you just pick up. So I'd cut the chuck roast into like cubes. And so I picked it up and just, I mean, it just shredded in my hands. Mm -hmm. So good. And then, yeah, everything else was basically exactly what you said. So. No, that's. Yeah. I'm just going to take a minute and think, think back to that. Dude. And I had, uh, I think you did too. We both had leftovers for. A little bit today. Dude, I had so good. I had leftovers for lunch on Monday. I had leftovers <laughs> today. Like it's see, my freaking kids are getting to the age where they eat so much. I didn't have leftovers every day. I did have it yesterday or today though when I got home. And well, I got it's still delicious. Yeah, my recipe I think was for was a six uh, three to five pound chuck roast. Mm -hmm. And I probably did about six pounds of brisket by the time I was done oh, trying. Nice. And but, did it all break down pretty good? And did you have any fatty pieces? No, it it broke down just fine, especially when she shredded. It wasn't quite as fall apart as I wanted. Mm -hmm. You promised not to hate me. Never. I used a crock pot. I almost used a crock pot, and I thought you would judge me for it. Gosh I, dang it, John. I used one. I hate crock pots. Like... <laughs> 
But, like, same thing. We had church. I didn't want to leave the stove on. I didn't think about just putting it in the oven. That would have been a good idea. Yeah, it worked out good. Um, because I, like, I honestly, like, I hate it. I hate crock pots. They <laughs> never, I have never cooked meat in a crock pot and been like, oh, this is so tender. I love yeah. it. Like, I, I just, I hate it, man. Well, it seems like it should be done. And then it's got to go eight more hours before you can even use it. Yeah. And, yeah. So I used a crock pot. It reminded me why the crock pot had to be like cleaned because it had so much dust on it. Mm. Um, I really don't know what crock pots are good for anymore. Yeah. We use the instant pot for basically everything. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man, that was, that was one of the better meals I can remember having. And look, I like we really good at my house. Mm-hmm. Um, but went over to my dad's with all of that stuff, and we had uh, he made Spanish rice, and mm. my mom made queso. And dude, like we just gorged ourselves. We had flan for dessert. It oh, was Cinco de Mayo. Like dang, that's, that yeah. was part of the reason this was. Well, and your dad's from Mexico, right? Did he grow up there? No, my my grandma grew up in. That's what I'm thinking. In Mexico, she she grew up in Colonial Juarez, um, in uh, in Colonial Dublin is where she's from. So, yeah, it, it like it's a big part of our heritage. Mm-hmm. So, like Cinco de Mayo is always a big deal. Yeah, um, it's my in laws' anniversary. Too, so there you go. Yeah, so did that had a, had a great meal, but. I'm telling you, man, it's Mother's Day on Sunday, and like it's gonna be hard to hard yeah. to beat. I told uh, I took some over to my mom and my uh, siblings. We all kind of just met over there, and they had some. And I was like, you know what? It's rare that I nail something on the first try, but it was so good. I mean, if I were to make it yeah, again, I, mean, I don't think I would change anything. Like it was so good. So yeah, I like I've got a few things. I I don't know that I would say I would change them. Like I've already made some refinements in my head, and most yeah. of it's like I would smoke the meat, or I would put the crop. I would put a Dutch oven out on my smoker. Yeah. Um, just I I like the smoky flavor. So well, and I would use my Blackstone because it took me about three times longer oh, on yeah. my freaking pancake griddle to yeah cook yeah. those and i might try the corn because i was expecting it to crisp up on the tortillas it really never did so yeah that might yeah, be the corn better. the corn tortillas i think will make a big difference hmm. and not sponsored or affiliated in any way but if you're in cash valley go to la fuente um tortilla area it's just north of Macy's next door to Pier 49. Oh, yeah. I've still yeah. never been there. You've plugged like, uh, them multiple like, I'm times. I'm just going to tell you right now. Once you eat tortillas from there, um, you won't eat tortillas from Is it like store. a tortilla store? You just walk in and say, yeah, I yeah. want some tortillas? I thought it was a restaurant. No, no, no. Like, they do some food stuff there. Um, and don't get me wrong. Like, Anna is a great cook. Mm. But... Their primary business is supplying tortillas to Mexican restaurants. Oh, really? Yeah. And you can just walk in off the street and be like, "Hey, uh-huh. give me some." Right on. Yeah, like they've got a they've got a little refrigerator right there. Um, I used to have like their schedule down because I would go in when they were making the corn tortillas, and Anna would go in the back and bring me like hot ones right oh, off the. Nice. Yeah. Huh. There are a few things in this world that are as delicious as a fresh hot corn tortilla. Really? Oh my god! I've ever had man. one. That was that was like one of my favorite memories about going on vacation in Mexico. Mm. Um, and we never like went to like the like big resorts. Like I've never been to Cancun or Cozumel or anything. But um, my dad's got family right down in uh, Choya Bay and Rocky Point. Um, and that was one of the things, like, I remember any time we went down there, we'd get up in the morning and we'd go down to the tortilla area. Little old ladies sitting there making tortillas, mm. running them through the machine. And, <clears throat> and you just buy them fresh, huh? Yep. Right on. Life was good, dude. So. Hmm. Um, do you know what you're cooking for Mother's Day? 
No, I was just thinking that. It's tough because I want I want Whitney to be happy. So I need to kind of think of what she would want and and see there. So she's not really into all the big cuts of meat that I like to make. So Does she like pork? Uh she likes hot dogs. Well, there's pork and hot dogs. Well, she likes all beef hot dogs, so I guess no. Mm. The answer to that is no. I was going to say, I think I'm doing a bone-in pork roast. Oh, right on. Um, Which is a glorified pork loin. Yeah. But that's mm. money, dude. Yeah, that would be good. Maybe I'll, if there's any left, maybe I'll bring over a a little, a little section. Bring yeah. her a lollipop of pork <laughs> to try. There you go. So. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what we're doing. I think we'll, we'll do that. Maybe some uh, Leonese potatoes. Nice. So That sounds fantastic. Mm. Have you ever done potatoes, I think Hasselback potatoes? Uh-huh. Is that pretty good? Hasselback? Yeah. yeah They're sounds, awesome. I've seen a lot of that stuff. Maybe I'll try that. That sounds interesting. I just thought of it right now. have done zero research, so no, that's where uh, we're at. Get... Find the biggest potatoes you can. You need big old baker russets. Huh? Uh huh. And then take those and put it between. This is how ghetto I am. Uh, you know, like plastic clothes hangers. Uh huh. I break two of those. Okay. So that I've got like the bo- the bottom pieces of the hanger, the long pieces, and I uh-huh. lay those on the side and I use those to make sure I don't cut too deep. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep. Go okay. through, cut. Um, and you cut almost all the way through, right? Yeah. It just and makes little slices. On yeah, and potato. that's why you put the, yeah, the hanger there. So that there. it stays together. Yeah, I mean, okay. you could use wooden spoons if you had long handles. Mm. I'm just ghetto, so I... Uh, Do I support it. And not ghetto, I shouldn't say that. Um, like, I, like I told my dad, it's, it's, uh, it's not hillbilly, it's redneck engineering. <laughs> there you go. We pulled a... We pulled a motor out of a boat this weekend, and I we couldn't get close enough to the center of the boat with the forks on the forklift because pulling a pulling a motor out of a boat is hard because you've got to get up high. Right. It's not just like let's get a cherry picker and put it under right. the hood. Um. So I lashed a four by four to one of the forks on the forklift. <laughs> Man, it we, what could go wrong? <laughs> hey, it was great. That's it was awesome. perfect. <laughs> but my uh, my uncle called and he's like, "Kind of hillbilly." <laughs> I was like, "Hey, I feel like hillbilly is derogatory. I prefer redneck engineering." Um, That's so awesome. similar thing with the Hasselbacks, but yeah, just slice them up. Uh, and honestly, like, don't be afraid to load that thing up. Lots of cheese, lots of bacon. Mm. Um, I like to cook them a little bit. I think some people have like even talked about like parboiling them a, a bit, but I just put them out on the smoker for a little while till they start to open up a little better, a little bit. So it's uh it's easier to load. Right on. So mm. those are, that's my hot tip of the day. I like it. So well, maybe we'll try that. We'll see. I support it. Yeah, that sounds great. Alrighty, it's that time. Mike and I are looking I at so. each other weird. <laughs> We just made eye contact, guys. We got to end this crap. So, uh, <laughs> so let's 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 do a quick recap. Yes. yes. Uh, Oreos and Meat Church are yeah. delicious. Give it a shot. Seriously, I mean, I was not a believer, and now I am. So, yeah, it's it's weird, but it's good. Yeah. Um, miracles happen. Yes, they do indeed. Every day. Subscribe to YouTube. Yep. Go Hit to up the website. Go to the website. Fatguyswithsmokers.com. Dot com. Dot com. What was that? Was Expedia. that Yahoo? Oh, Expedia. I That's think, what it was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Fatguyswithsmokers.com. Fatguyswithsmokers.com. Berea is awesome. Berea tacos are amazing. And this is going to be your last reminder while you have any time to still do something. It's Mother's Day on Sunday. Don't screw it up. Let's go, fellas. You got this. Until next time, I'm John. I'm Mike. We're Fat Guys with Smokers. Thanks for listening to the Fat Guys with Smokers podcast. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. 
Be sure to subscribe so you don't forget to tune in for even more nonsense from a couple of bad guys with smokers. Don't forget to like, subscribe.